what happens in Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet? Let's find out. How's it going, Revision Squad? It's me, Liam, aka Mr. Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and this video marks the beginning of my Romeo and Juliet revision series. Now, what else would be a better way to start this series than me summarising the first act of the play? Summaries for Acts 2 to 5 will follow in due course, but if I were to sum up the entirety of Shakespeare's play in just one video, well, it would be very, very long. Before I get stuck into the summary for Act 1, please do not forget to give this video a like, write me a comment, and share it with anyone who you think might find it useful. And if you are studying or revising Romeo and Juliet, why not subscribe to my channel too and turn on that notification bell, because that way you are not going to miss any of the other videos that I will be making about Romeo and Juliet. Alright, cringe worthy beg out of the way. What actually happens in Act 1. Okay, so Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet begins with a prologue. Broadly speaking, this prologue gives an outline of Romeo and Juliet's plot. It makes some really key information clear right at the very beginning of the play, meaning that the audience are going to be well aware of what's about to happen. For instance, the prologue reveals that the play is about two families, who we later find out are called the Montagues and Capulets. They live in the city-state of Verona, which is in Italy. Now, vitally, these two families hate each other and have a long-standing feud. Importantly, fate determines that a Montague and a Capulet, namely Romeo and Juliet, become star-crossed lovers. By the end of the play, we are told, these lovers die. These two deaths, it turns out, are the only thing that can end the bitter hatred that exists between the two families. Act 1, Scene 1 begins with servants from the Montague and Capulet families having a fight, following some incredibly rude thumb-biting antics. However, more family members and family representatives and family allies get involved too. The fight definitely escalates. In fact, you could say that it escalates quickly. Anyway, Prince Aeschylus, the chap who rules over the city-state of Verona, turns up and forbids the two families from fighting. He says that if they are caught fighting again, he will sentence everyone involved to death. Not good. A little while later, once things have settled down a bit, Romeo is introduced, and we find out that he is sad because he has been rejected by Rosaline. He is very weepy and forlorn. Act 1, Scene 2 sees Paris, a relative of the prince, chatting with Lord Capulet, the head of the Capulet household. During this chat, Paris asks Lord Capulet if he may marry Juliet, Lord Capulet's only daughter. However, Lord Capulet isn't so keen on the idea, saying that Juliet is too young to be married because she is not yet 14 years old. He asks Paris to wait until Juliet is 16. But the thing is, Lord Capulet is not going to end their conversation on a negative note. And so he invites Paris to a party that he is soon to throw. He gives Paris permission to woo Juliet, meaning that he says it's okay for Paris to try to win Juliet's affections, but also tells him that there will be many other beautiful women at the party as well. Before he and Paris leave the stage, Lord Capulet gives one of his servants a note that contains a list of names of people that he wants his servant to go and invite to the party. The servant runs off. Some point later, he bumps into Romeo in the street, and this is how Romeo finds out about the party at the Capulet household. Having seen that Rosaline is on the list of invitees, Romeo decides to go to the party as well. Act 1, Scene 3 takes place in the Capulet household. Initially, Lady Capulet and the nurse, sort of like Juliet's personal assistant, 
talk about Juliet's age. During this chat, Nurse tells a crude story about when Juliet was a toddler. Anyway, after that, Lady Capulet asks Juliet what she thinks about marrying Paris. Lady Capulet seems pretty keen on this idea, praising many of his qualities. In response, Juliet says that she isn't particularly interested in the idea about marrying Paris, saying that it's something that she's never really thought of. But in response to her mother's excitement, Juliet says that she will try to show an interest in Paris at the party if that is what her mother wants her to do, suggesting that Juliet is fairly obedient at this point of the play. Act 1, Scene 4 sees Romeo and his two close friends, Mercutio and Benvolio, making their way to the Capulet party. Now, Romeo and Benvolio, who are both Montagues, have to wear masks because they were not explicitly invited to the party. Now, this is quite normal practice for the time. If you wanted to go to a party that you weren't invited to, you had to wear a mask and be prepared to give a speech to the host. Mercutio does not need to wear a mask, as he was on the invite list. He is neither a Montague nor a Capulet, and is in fact a distant relative of Paris and the Prince. As they walk to the party, Romeo and Mercutio banter for a bit. They exchange puns, and Mercutio jokes about dreams and fairies in a way that is sort of teasing Romeo. The level of banter shows that they have a pretty strong friendship. As the scene comes to a close, Romeo announces that he has a bad feeling that he might die prematurely. Nice and cheery, don't you think? Act 1, Scene 5 starts with the party beginning. And from across the room, Romeo sees Juliet and instantly, and I mean instantly, falls in love. Tybalt, who is Juliet's cousin, recognises Romeo's voice as belonging to a Montague. As such, Tybalt wants to fight him and gets pretty angsty. Lord Capulet, however, being mindful of the prince's commands and the fact that any potential violence might occur in his own house, forbids Tybalt from fighting. Tybalt does as he is told. Meanwhile, Romeo and Juliet have met and have started to flirt, which they do by using religious language. In the midst of all their flirting, they kiss a few times. How romantic. Whilst with Juliet, Romeo finds out that she is a Capulet, and he promptly leaves the party. Afterwards, Juliet finds out that Romeo is a Montague. Her love for Romeo is already so intense that this leaves her feeling very conflicted indeed. After all, their families are sworn enemies. Alright, so that is Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet summarised. I really do hope that you found this video to be informative and useful and that it has given you a bit more confidence when it comes to studying and revising Shakespeare's play. If you've made it this far, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And remember, as always, that I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are revising, please do remember to take frequent short breaks. As a burned out student is not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you deserve to be. So it turns out quite a bit happens in Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet. There is a fight, there is a party, and there is talk of marriage and death. But most importantly of all, Romeo and Juliet meet and immediately fall in love. However, they both then realise that the person they have fallen in love with belongs to their family's arch enemy which leads them to both feel immensely conflicted. Do they side with the person they love or their family? I guess we'll find out in the rest of the play.